something, but there's no excuses I should have been here at 11.30. However, I did go to the market, and I didn't see you, but some of you saw me. That's good. I went to the market, and, you know, and then I saw I don't have cameras. So I ran back to the hotel, grabbed my camera, ran back to the market, took some pictures. Uh, so I'm looking forward to discussing this with you a little bit. Uh, before I go any further, let me, let me say that whenever I travel places, I like to take things to people. You know, small things. Whenever I was a young graduate student like you, sometimes it wasn't, but like a postcard or something like that. But nowadays I can take other things. So, to Ruth, I gave a copy of this book, Seed Folk. This is a wonderful children's book. I have my graduate students read this book. So, if, graduate, if it's, it's a fourth grader's book, graduate students can understand it. <laughs> it's a good book. I'm serious. Get you, the, the, the Dutch students should see if they can borrow it from Root at some, at some point. For Andres and the Spanish students, the Spanish students I have a copy. So I'm going to give it to Andres right now. And I also have some cards from this. I've given that some, I have some other little things for people. But, uh, so I'm going to leave this stuff for the Spanish students, okay? And these cards, this is Madison, Wisconsin. I don't know if you can see it. But the university is right on the lake. And the students, the students brew beer for the bar. And it's good. Why are we there? I'm sorry? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Why are we, that's right, why didn't you come here? Tell it, you know, tell it, tell the powers that be. Maybe we can write a grant application. Why not? Anyways, so this is for Andres. Okay. And, and uh, I have some other little things for other people associated, but I'll give it to them later on. Okay. So today we want to talk about some public sector initiatives. You will notice that the program changed a little bit from its draft, or you, you may not know that, but the program changed from whenever I designed my presentation. So last night I was making some changes, and today I'm going to have to make a couple of other little changes as we go along. Okay, but don't worry about it, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. So, what have we been doing? We've been operating on two levels at the same time. On one level, we've been discussing community and regional food systems and urban agriculture as just sort of general topics for consideration. We've gotten some understanding of the system of ideas and behaviors that are associated with community and regional food systems and urban agriculture. And then on another level, we've discussed a few things, a few ideas that you might be able to use in coming up with a plan of your own. Right? A couple of policy ideas, I've borrowed some examples from other places and introduced them to you, and I'm going to continue to do that today. But, I thought about this a little bit last night, and I said to myself, there's a few things in the larger set of slides that, you should, that I should point out to you, that you might look at in the next couple of days. One of them is the Food Glossary Wiki. So everybody knows what a wiki is, right? Mm -hmm. It's a way of concept, you know, put up some ideas in dictionaries uh, and then have people come and manipulate it. So two years ago, my food systems class uh, designed a, a food glossary, a glossary of food system terms. And we invite people from all over the world. There's only, I think there's three European people who are on it, uh, to log on and, and uh, change the definitions. And what we ask for is we ask for a definition, an example of the concept in use. So uh, food uh, so food miles or food desert. Uh, so any particular concept has has an example of it. So a food desert, so for instance, uh, a usage example is a food desert is a, 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 a significantly sized community without access to uh, healthy food in grocery stores or for mobile markets. 
and then they cite where that usage comes from. And then they maybe use a couple of, provide a couple of examples from the literature. So I invite you to look at it. The food glossary. Uh, if you Google food glossary Morales, it'll come right up to the top, okay? If you Google that, and you, you ask for permission to join, and then you join, and you can, you can do whatever you want, right? People check it. I have my students edit and check the entries, uh, but that's what it's for. Okay, it may be useful to you. Maybe, maybe for this project. Maybe not. But down the road, as you do more food systems work, it probably will be some some use to you. And then the other thing that I've had for many years is called OpenAir.org. OpenAir.org is a web page for for marketplaces, for open air markets and street vendors. Now, for I, that was a pretty active web page for about 10 years, from about 1996, 1995. And then it sort of went out of use for a while, and now I'm bringing it back. And I have a Facebook page for it as well that I started a month ago. You know, why not? So, uh, so like tonight, today, the pictures that I took at the Lugo Market here, where we all were, I'll be putting them up on the Facebook page later on. Uh, and so, you know, those, that resource, the markets webpage, is not, um, it's not up to date, I'm updating it right now, I've got a technical person who's helping me with that. But that's something where I invite also participation from anybody. Okay, so, <clears throat> what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to talk about public sector initiatives and public sector planning practice. And we're going to try and bring that your knowledge about the public sector activities that you know about into relationship with this project and with some of these ideas. Okay, we're going to try and bring those into a close relationship to each other. The, and then later on today, I'm going to talk about some European-American comparisons. We're going to try and, in a tentative way, in a tentative way, specify some, uh, some key operations that distinguish food system practice between the two continents. Okay, let's start with governance. Let's start with the idea of governance. <coughs> what is this idea of governance? In your educational practice, in your pursuit of education, what is governance? How does it work? What is this idea of governance? Is this a concept you're familiar with? No? Say no if it's not, or if it is, just take a, uh, give me a sense of what you know about it. Try something. <laughs> Somebody try. What is government? What is government? The overseeing of something. Okay, the overseeing of something. So, in your households, in your families, is there governance? Okay, right? So there's governance, and, and who are the parties to governance? Your parents, Okay. When you're younger, money. In a family situation, right? The parents oversee the activities of the kids. Help me out though here a little bit. In the state, right, in the market that you just visited, how is governance in operation? They, uh, they rent the place for to the people so they can sell. Excellent. There's a rental relationship, <coughs> right? There's, there's the spaces and there's the acquisition of a space. There's acquiring a space. Okay? That implies a relationship. What kind of relationship does that imply? It implies a relationship between the, uh, the, the person purchasing the space and the other person that they're purchasing it from, right? But it also implies a relationship between the person and the space. So let me give you an example of this. 
in your classrooms, do you sit in the same seat each time you go to class? No. That's a bad example. <laughs> yes. Some students, some students sit in the same seat. They develop a relationship between themselves and their place. Right? Okay? Some, right? So likewise at the market, there's a, the, the, the system of governance implies not just a relationship between people, but a relationship between people and place. People and space. Okay? And I think it's important to, when you think about governance, to think about it not solely as a one-way action of the governor to the parties. No, I think that it's, there's actually a system of relationships in place. Okay? The relationship between people, between people and their roles, right? And between people and places. And that's a process. That's a process. So what is governance? What is governance? Governance is the act, right, of overseeing something, as you indicated. It's the act of providing for opportunities for people as well. So governance is not simply about authority, but it's also about enabling. It's about capacitating. It's about developing people's capacity. Good governance enables people to do more than they would otherwise be able to do. Right? Good governance. Bad governance constrains people. It's hard to tell, you know, when there's good governance and when there's bad governance. Let me give you an example. Okay? In the United States, where I live in Madison, Wisconsin, money from the federal government comes to local governments to support community organizations. In Madison, the ordinance, the law that establishes those programs says we will support developing community gardens with this money but people cannot sell the produce. People cannot sell the produce. So in other words you can go and you can put the time in to develop a garden and, and you can get benefits from that garden but you can't get economic benefits. You can get social benefits, you can get health benefits, you can get mental health benefits, feeling good and of leisure, right? But you can't get economic benefits. And that's, that can be a problem. Right? Now, just in the same state, Wisconsin, but a hundred miles away in Milwaukee, the local government said, you can sell that product. So, between jurisdictions, here in Spain, between municipalities, we want to ask ourselves, can municipalities act in different ways and enable people to have different relationships to each other and to the product of their labor, to the product of their activity. So, in, in, in Wisconsin, there's a, a, there are constraints in across the United States over the, the, the same activity can be constrained in one place, but not so constrained in another place. The very same activity. And what, what we want to ask ourselves is if governance allows such diversity, why can't people imagine themselves even more diverse? If from the top down there's diversity in the ordinances and laws that make something possible, why can't from the ground up, from the level of the people, why can't we imagine a whole variety of different activities? We're going to explore that question here in a little bit, okay? So, what I'd like you to do right now, what I want us to do right now, is think a little bit about our experience in the market this morning, okay? Because we have a variety of experiences. I don't know about you, but some people, I got my camera, you know, and somebody said, no, don't take any pictures of me, right? And other people said, oh yeah, look at what I got, you know? And so, we had very different experiences of all sorts in the market, so I want to talk about those a little bit. Right but before we go on to that, let me just ask, us, let ask you again. Government. <coughs> in the market, one way that that came up was in spaces. How people get spaces. 
how else do you think that it came up? How else do you think governance uh, uh, is apparent in the market? How else is governance uh, part of the marketplace? When you think about the spaces in the market, mm -hmm. who's on the first round level? The sellers. The, the, the users. users. The regular sellers, huh? Oh. The, the, the producers. Yes. People with regular spots. Who's in the basement? Yeah, there's turnover, right? <laughs> different, different kinds of vendors are in different parts of the market. That's part of governance. How do you think that that gets organized? Did anybody ask? I don't know. Don't worry, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. How else is there governance apparent in the market? How is it, how do you think, what, how is it that governance is operating in ways you couldn't see? Maybe locations of the floors, because you had some uh, uh, few uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, fish shops next to each other. And uh, when you walk further, you had some uh, grocery stores. So they are you know, all put together, I think. And in flowers, one the corner. Yeah, one corner of flowers. I'm sorry? One, count, one corner of flowers. Yes, yeah. one corner of flowers. And did you notice that? So that, lo that physical, that spatial location, that spatial arrangement, do you think that was random? No. Probably not. Right? Probably not. So, when, when you, uh, okay, so, governance is, once again, let me just repeat this in a particular way. Governance is typically thought of as top-down and authority, constraining. The model is your parents. They just tell you what you can't do. You know, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But good governance is all about creating relationships not only between people, but between people and their activities in a way that enable them to do more things, more than what they can imagine. So, let's think about the market for a second. Everybody get into your groups. Real quick, because we're going to do two little activities. Right now. Get into your groups. Get into your groups. Thank <laughs> you. 